What's up guys, it's Numotis. The story of this video starts way back in 2015, back when I was called Pezmobile and I released an EP called Rocket Science. And the title track off that EP is now being remixed by my friend Nightcrawler. And he has asked me to do a little bit of work on the remix to get it sounding better. So I'm gonna be showing you guys what I'm gonna do to this track. And I'm gonna be sharing a lot of good tips and tricks about Ableton and about music production in general, mixing and composition. So here we go. Uh, the first tip is that when you're bringing stems into Ableton, you can simply drag them in and hold control or command on a Mac, I believe. And it'll create new tracks for every single track and it'll name them automatically. So right now I'm just gonna go through and organize these a little bit and I'll speed up the video. So all I've done is I put the vocals at the top followed by the beats, so hi-hats, snares, then kicks, then the sub, and then all of my synths, and then my drop bass, and then my effects. So everything's organized a bit better. And we can go ahead and color code them the way I usually do. Um, Vox are gonna be pink. All of the beats are gonna be yellow. The sub is dark blue. The synths are all gonna be light blue. And maybe since this is my drop lead, I'll make that kind of green. And then my bass will be green. And then my effects can be just like orange. That's fine, I think that's how I usually do it. And then we can also change the clips to make it really easy. So now what I wanna do is just get everything in a better position to be mixed, uh, just by turning all the tracks down, let's say by like uh, 10 dB is all right. Um, and then if we play the loudest part. We've got about 7 dB of headroom, so I could turn that down even a little more so that we have about 9 dB of headroom. So now I need to sync this up with my BPM, so I can just zoom in here and find the main transient where the drop happens. And that's gonna be here, it's gonna wanna be here on um, bar 49, and um, that's a multiple of four plus one, so you have 48 and 49. You know, from producing and DJing, a lot of this specific math that comes along with it will just get burned into your head. So you just wanna pull this back until it, boom, it's right there, and then you can play part of it with the metronome. And it's perfect. So now I wanna to listen to the whole thing and get an idea of what I wanna change, what I wanna add, maybe what I wanna take away and just see what I want to do with the track and I'll try to explain why and how it'll make it better.
So you can see that while I was listening, I'm kind of organizing the project a bit more, adding some notes at the top about what I want to do, and I'm um, kind of trimming this so that um, I can see exactly where each sound is happening, and it doesn't just look like blocks of sound. So overall, I think there's kind of a problem with the energy in this song. You know, it feels a little sluggish. I think it has a lot to do not just with the mix, but with the way that the transitions are happening. Um, one other thing I noticed here is that in order for this to kind of be mixed properly, these are totally different sounds. Um, so we're just gonna put this on a new track and call this Impact Snare. And let's, um, let's try to get the drop sound more interesting by adding um, some faster claps in the build because I think that's gonna build a lot of anticipation and then we're gonna have a better sounding drop without even having to change the drop. One thing that I like to add all the time, um, which is a trick I got from A5, I believe, in the in the DAW series. In that video, I'll link to it in the description, really great video. Um, just put an 808 clap on your snare, but I'm also gonna be using this for the build. So we're gonna start here. shouldn't really be warped and we can pitch them up a little bit. And this has the kind of um, kind of texture I want but not the brightness. Um, then I'll usually have it go twice before it starts getting faster, or it starts getting pa faster before the next downbeat so that it kind of leads into itself. And we have that. Um, and then even here we can go faster. And we don't really want any of these effects happening during where the build is happening. Um, this one, maybe, we'll come back to that simply because that's part of the drop lead. But let's make sure to remove everything from here. And maybe even, maybe even chop this kick tail just so that it's a small transition. <laughs> Um, and then I do think that it's necessary to have like some kind of lead into the sound if this just kind of dropped abruptly um, without this sound. It doesn't sound as good, like there's no way anyone would anticipate it. So um, I'm actually gonna copy this back and use this trick that I do a lot um, which is simply to use a EQ and a uh, reverb. Um, and it's something that is known as the far away rack. I learned this from Ill Gates. So throw this on there. Um, and in Ableton, it's really easy to put these things onto a macro. Um, and so what this is doing is just turning up the reverb and filtering out the lows and the highs so that it seems very far away. Um, and you can play it soloed. So you can hear that and hear it kind of come in. Um, 
So that's one technique I use to kind of get the um, to get the idea of the drop to kind of be introduced. Um, and then this this vocal is kind of feeling a bit weird. Uh, what I want to do is replace this with uh, the original because I think the pitch shifting is a little off. Okay, so what I had in the original tune, I think that I had the low layered with the high like this. Um, but for this... Maybe we can get creative with this though and use this as kind of part of the build. Maybe like use that little clip from the low instead. Make this dark so I remember that it's low. Because the more stuff that you kind of change and, and make um, different in this space right before the drop, it's kind of like you're changing stuff more and more. There's getting It's becoming more and more complicated, but you can't actually have more sounds in here because the mix is going to get impossible to deal with um, and it's not going to sound good if there's too many things happening, but you want new things to be happening and interesting things to be happening right before the drops. So this is kind of a way that I've done that here. Um, then what I wanna do is just bring these all back and um, consolidate this in Ableton, that's Control J. Um, and in FL Studio, I believe you can kind of, you can do something similar. Um, and now we are gonna just automate the pitch of this so that it starts an octave down. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning and see what else we can do with the intro before trying to tweak the drop at all. I really do like this intro up in the about here. Like nothing really needs to change, I don't think. So I don't think this sounds good, but we can throw some other type of vox in there. Just um Yeah, y'all, y'all, yeah. That's that's good enough for right now and pitch it down a bit. Yeah. Uh, make it a bit quicker. Try to stretch it and then turn it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, now I'm just kind of messing around to see what sounds the best, see if I can make it sound any better. Um, but we'll leave it like that for now. That that definitely improves it a bit. Yeah. Uh, if you notice, I added that effect there. Did 
this whole sample just adds a lot of texture and detail. This one is from Freesound. It's called Rocket Explosed. But I can tell it's from Freesound because it's got this number up here. That's freesound.org. Um, yeah, amazing site to get some specific samples. So check it out if you don't know about that. Uh, now what I want to do is see if there's anything else that's kind of sucking the energy out of this track. Uh, I think that's this synth and maybe the bells also. Now this loop sounds really good. Like it's something I would hear on a trap beat or something. But I think it, it needs to have the buildup incorporated in it. I think right here is where I want to start making it a part of the buildup and just kind of repeat this. Uh, and have that go. Do the same type of thing that I did with, with the vocal. And just have it repeat when the... When the claps get faster, we can also have this get faster too. And in Ableton, it's super easy to do that because you hit this um, double time or you divide time button. Um, and then duplicate that one more time. And for here, I want it to sound with that. Now we can zoom in and put the fade here. Good. Then we can see how this sounds. Um, sounds kind of crummy. We want to put it on beats mode so that those transients are preserved and then consolidate it again. And then pitch it up just like we did with those vocals. We can do this because it comes back down to the root note. Uh, that might be good. Um, but then what I want to do to also make this part of the buildup is put a high pass filter on it and automate that. So I'm going to put this here and this is just going to have a little more resonance than usual or than zero, I guess. And um, then I'm going to bring this up. You hit A to turn on your automation or go into automation mode. And then as this kind of comes in, we're going to have this um, come up so that like it's getting more energy and and we're removing all the low the low end that's kind of causing it to be static because like now that we have something changing it's also changing and being more interesting okay so let's see how the build sounds now Alright, so the next thing I want to change is maybe these bells. Uh, and one idea I have right now is I can use a delay to kind of um, bring the intensity in. Um, and this is also going to involve some automation here. Um, I can actually copy this high pass filter to the bells track so that I also have high pass automation here. Um, so now for the delay, uh, I am going to keep that before the high pass. Um, and then just have the dry wet come up when I want it to get more intense because it sounds like there's more notes being played. And then cut out at the very end where I want that silence to happen. You know what, let's see how it sounds with the same exact automation.
Yeah. Um, so now the build is sounding quite a bit better. Um, I think these bells also want to kind of slide up and it's, it's good that we have them in audio. So I'm also just going to make a kind of a cut there and then take this section and have it slide up. Um, maybe tones, um, these different warping modes definitely change the way the sound reacts to pitch stretching. So play around, play around with that. And uh, make sure you're putting your automation where the clip is. Yeah. Uh, so that sounds a bit. That sounds a bit better. It kind of climbs all the way up. Uh, then maybe we can kind of um, just make this part quieter than the other part by a couple dB, and then turn this down even more. I the presence of the bells is a little too much. Okay. They're very audible when they come in there, and. Um, they don't need to be as loud, I don't think. Now the synth. I think the synth is totally good. Um, we want to cut this here. I don't even know if I want that last note. Yeah. Um, no. Okay. Um, so now, um, having the sub during the build, I didn't notice this before, but having the sub during the build is not really a good idea um, because you want um, the sub to come in out of nowhere and kind of hit people, and that's kind of what makes it a drop. So, so what do we? What pattern do we have for the sub? First of all. There's a little bit of high end that we don't want at all there. So we're gonna, so we're just gonna EQ that out. And then turn on my sub so I can hear it better. Um, for the purpose of mixing, sometimes it's good to mix with your sub a little loud and then turn it down. And when you add compression to the master, that's gonna bring the sub back up and make it seem much louder. Um, so one thing that can add a lot more energy into the drop, um, in the same way that I just explained uh, that you don't really want your sub to be before the drop, you want the drop to seem like it's continually dropping so that it has, has more sustained energy. So one way to do this is to take out the sub for a note or two every, every few bars, every four bars I'm doing this. Yeah. So already that adds a little something. One other thing that's going on here that I noticed is that we have the sub changing notes. Yeah. But it really wants to do that on the kick. It's going to sound like the kick and the sub are more together. Um, like their pals, um, they're both in the same frequency range. So, in order to make the drop sound more cohesive, you want to have the sub note change on your kick. So we can kind of tweak this a little. Yeah. So let's just solo the kick and sub for now. So this is another spot you can you can do both. You can edit the way that the sub is, and you can edit the way that the kick is to get them to um, jive together. Because this is the backbone of your track. You want to put the sounds in around the kick and the sub, and maybe the snare as well. Um, you want all the sounds to fit together with the beat, so that it's easy to feel the beat and dance to the beat 
while also being entertained by the sounds. Okay, so what I notice here now is that the sub is not actually in the the root note of the song when it comes back in. This would be the root note here. When it comes in there, let's see, it's the same. So that could be a reason that the entire intro and the drop don't seem to be part of the same song. Um, so, hit, um, this is not really good to do with a sub audio, but, okay, that's better. Yeah. So already the drop sounds kind of a lot groovier just because of these edits here. So now what we can do is kind of make this sound a bit better. Um, I think the EQ on it. You know, you want it to have the same kind of presence that your other lead does. It's just changing the type of sound, um, but it wants to fill up as much as the spectrum as possible. Maybe here. You can add an EQ too. Maybe add a bit more distortion on the lows um, using some overdrive. So the video is kind of getting long, so I want to share just a couple more quick tricks um, about how to get your stuff sounding more energetic, because um, I think that was the main issue with this song, was that just the energy. Um, so let's listen to the drop one more time. Yeah. Oh, oh, like I said I was gonna do is put the 808 claps on the snare um, and you'll see this probably is gonna make a big difference oh. I think there's a bit too much reverb on the snare. So we can just take take it and um, zoom in. So make sure this transient is all right. Um, it really is a little bit off. If you zoom in all the way, you can see. That's just the way that stems end up being, so. So if you're uh, working with stems, make sure you check exactly where your transients are. So we wanna, yeah, reduce the reverb on this stuff. That is good, because if you have too much reverb on stuff in the drop, it's gonna make it sound far away, it's gonna make it sound washed out, and you want everything in the drop to be right up in your face. Um, and now that's not always the case. I, in a lot of drops, especially trap and some dubstep, um, there's like reverb automation, and and that can cause like a really cool effect by making things seem like they're moving back and forth. You know, when the sound is meant to be in your face, that reverb is off and it's in your face. Um, and then what you can do with the kick is use some kind of transient shaper. Um, 
but I'm going to show you how to do this really easy with a basic compressor. Um, and I'm going to have this turn on just for the drop. What you do is turn the threshold pretty much all the way down and turn the dry wet to about half. Uh, you also want to turn the ratio up quite a bit, but you want to turn the attack up also to around 50 milliseconds. Um, one good trick you could do is um, look online or you could make an Excel spreadsheet like I have where um, you can put in your BPM and get the number of milliseconds that a specific note is. So we're here at 170 and um, 1 16th note is going to be 88 milliseconds, 88.235. So I can go ahead, double click, and put that in 88.235. So you can see the kick has got really punchy now um, because it's essentially it's compressing it very hard. If I turn the attack down, yeah. it's actually totally reducing the sound. You can't even hear it. Yeah. But what the attack does is it gives the compressor some time before it starts. And that is allowing the very beginning of the sound through. And we're essentially putting that on top of the dry sound to make it more punchy. And what I'm gonna do is make it 44.118. Yeah. Getting your EQ correct before the compression is also a big deal. Yeah. There's usually a muddy spot around 300, 250 in most kicks. Yeah. You want to get rid of. Um, and there's also this free plugin that I finally downloaded um, that you should definitely get. It's called Bark of Dog. Yeah. And you can pick the, well, you probably just want to use this preset kick thumper. Yeah. Another good idea is to layer your kick. Um, I think this is the last thing I'm gonna do. Um, and then I'll probably make another video of me working on this track. But you wanna layer your kick with something interesting. Um, I'm gonna use a snap sample. That's the first thing that came into my head. See, I like that. And you just wanna take like a tiny bit cause you want this to totally merge with the kick. Um, this is essentially what uh, kick synthesis plugins allow you to do. They allow you to put in a sample and have that play at the transient of your kick. So we're going to get rid of the fade. Tiny fade on there. Um, and group these and put the EQ and compression and everything on the group. And this will be called kick. Whoa, see that? Do you hear that? Difference between this and that, a uh, big difference. But I recommend playing around with some different samples, of course, um, to get the tone of your kick right. So I don't know if a snap sample was the best, but that's definitely making the kick snappier. Um, so I can go ahead and put this on all the kicks. Um, but when I come back, I'll probably choose a different sample. But you can see how this makes the the drop have much more energy yeah. but that's the first phase of work that i'm going to do on this track uh, i hope you guys learned something and i hope you guys enjoyed that if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time i drop a new video because they're all going to be awesome peace out thank you guys for watching so much thank you